Uh, greetings, math fans. All right, so this is day nine. And today we're going to talk about something called the average rate of change. And this is basically over an interval. And what the average rate of change is, it's the amount of change divided by the length of the interval. So uh, amount of change might be uh, distance. That's probably, a, probably the best example. Uh, distance over time, okay? Um, and that's the interval. Your interval is the amount of time and your amount of change is the change in distance. All right, so uh, let's start with just a function here. If I said f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 5, and I said your interval was between 5 and 8. Okay, it's very simple. Okay, your average rate of change, arc, okay, is equal to f of 8 minus f of 5 over 8 minus 5. Okay, and again, that's your, our interval is down below, right, is uh, the difference in the interval, 8 minus 5, and that's your plugging that value into your function. And so f of 8 gives us 109, uh, f of 5 gives us 40 over 3, so you get 69 over 3, which is 20. Three. That's our average rate of change for that function. All right. Here's just like a real life example of when we're talking about average rate of change and how we're going to use this. Um, basically, the average rate of change, it's a good estimate of what's going on at that point, but we don't really care what's going on at the point. It's just we're getting kind of close to it. But basically, um, if I told you it takes three hours uh, to get to Purdue, from here, okay, and Purdue is 180 miles away. What would your average speed be? Your average speed would be 180 over 3, which is 60 miles per hour. Now that's a good guess. If I said, what was your speed in um, in Chicago, or what was your speed, you know, um, going down Highway 65, or in West Lafayette, Indiana, what's your average speed? It's a good guess that it's 60 miles per hour, okay? But it's not always necessarily the, the, the truth, right? Because if you're in Chicago, well, what do you have? Ah, you got traffic. Okay, when you're leaving on Thacker Drive, you better not be traveling 60 miles an hour. You're going to get a, a speeding ticket. You better be going 20 miles an hour. So to understand the difference between an average, average is a good estimate of it. It's not necessarily going to be the exact value, okay? but it's definitely a good estimate of, uh, of what's going on. Let's just talk, show it uh, graphically real quickly so we can put a couple things together. If I give you a graph, this is going to be f of some value or the y value. And these are going to be your uh, x values down here. Okay. And if I, let me just sketch a curve here. And we're going to put a couple points here. And we'll put this one point over there. So this is going to be Q1, Q2, Q3, and we'll call this point P. Okay, what I can do here, math fans, is uh, I'm going to draw some secant lines. So we're going to use the a red pen here. Okay, there's a secant line to that. There's a secant line to that. There's a secant line to that. Okay, even if I made one more point here, right, I can have another secant line to that. And the deal is, uh, the closer I get to that value of P, so this is going to be Q4 here, 
the closer I get to the value of P, the better estimate I have of what my speed is at the value of P. All right, and just kind of even looking at this, if I looked at the slope of that line, don't you guys agree that the slope of this line is just our old thing, the yaks? That's our average rate of change. Average rate of change is really the slope of the secant line, which is the yaks. So what you're going to do is you're going to say f of n minus f of start divided by n minus start. Kind of like when I developed before, right? Um, you're doing basically what you're doing. You're just finding the slope, right? Isn't aren't these y values, and aren't those x values? Hey, hey there's the yaks. All right. And my point is, the closer I get to like Q1, if I find the slope of that line right there, that's going to be kind of an okay value. It's not going to be really close to what it is. If I go to Q2, yeah, it's getting closer. The slope getting Q3, Q4, those points are getting closer. Uh, and the deal is that I can get a good estimate of what's going on right here. Okay, and do I know exactly what's going on there? No, I don't, um, because I can't necessarily plug this in. That function ended right here, right? The values I had, if you look at the old, I'll kind of right over here again, right? It ended right here. I don't know what's going on over here. So I, and by the next example that I show you guys, uh, will actually be a, a really good, uh, kind of a good indication of what average rate of change is uh, and looking at uh, some secant lines. So let's actually pull, this is a handout that I'm going to give you guys and let's pull it up now. Alright, so this is uh, some information here. It says, accelerating from a standstill, the figure shows a distance time graph for a 1994 Ford Mustang Cobra accelerating from a standstill. They give you a graph and it just shows you some different things here. I even have some approximations below here for the Q's and P's. So Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4, I give you the time um, and, uh, and the distance. So let's kind of look at a few things here. First of all, this is just like the graph before. If I draw all my secant lines to that function, right, and I don't want to mess up the whole graph here, but basically what you're doing is you're drawing, here's a secant line to that, and there's another secant line to this, and here's the, right. As I get closer to Q4, that value gets more and more accurate. So if I want to estimate the slopes, um, I can have PQ1, and that's equal to, again, kind of pulling the stuff off the graph here, this guy right here, is going to be uh, 650, that's P, right, minus Q1, which is, I'm going to say, about 220, over the time, which is uh, 24, P and 10 for Q1. So if I divide that out, I get 43 meters per second. That's the slope for PQ1. And I can do the same thing for PQ2. I'm not going to waste all kinds of time here, but it's going to be 45 meters per second. And PQ3 is going to be um, 56.67 meters per second. And PQ4 which actually is our best indicator because it's the closest one to the value of P. And notice we have no more data over here, uh, so we can't actually find out that slope right at that value, right? Um, we have to use that Q4, and that is uh, 50 meters per second. Okay, so those are, those are all the different estimating the slopes. So if I ask you guys to estimate the speed at P, you're going to use this guy right here, okay? The slope of that line, of that secant line, so the estimate of that speed is then 50 meters per second. All right? Uh, some of you guys might be saying, well, I don't understand, um, you know, why can't you, uh, why can't you just directly plug in uh, 650, right, 650 over 20? If I did 650 over 20, um, I would get 32.5 meters per second. So the deal is, you're, again, we're talking about the average rate of change. We're getting closer. We don't know what's happening at value P. In fact, um, at that value, I could actually stop, and I don't even know it. 
Okay, so I'm actually getting an, a good estimate as we're approaching it. Again, we're kind of talking about limits already, which we're going to do tomorrow's lesson. But um, we're truly looking at the, at the average rate of change to get to get, getting closer and closer and closer to the value of P. And that gives us a really good estimate of, uh, of what's going on. So you're going to use average rate of change if you have a bunch of data and you want to figure things out. Okay, if I, you were going to kind of calculate things tomorrow with limits, but if I just give you a bunch of data or I give you a graph like this, um, you should be able to come up with, um, you know, choosing this, this guy right here, the Q4, uh, and uh, figuring out the average rate of change. That's going to give you the best estimate of what's going on at P. Okay? So remember, for, uh, for this, you're approaching P. You're not there because I don't know what's going on with P. I don't know what's going on on the other side over here of P. All I know is what's going on on this side of P. And that's why I can do my average rate of change for that. All right. I hope you guys learned a little bit about average rate of change and when to use it. Basically, you're going to use it again when you have lots of nice data uh, to deal with. All right. Uh, and again, the closer value I have to Q, Q4 to that P, uh, the better off my answer is going to be. All right. Anyway, that's it, math fans. Have a great day. Adios. Goodbye.